protein is a complex organic compound, a chain called a polypeptide, whose links consist of amino acids. From this amino acid sequence, the protein derives its form and function. For most living organisms, protein acts as both the principal construction material and as a primary means of regulating and directing the activities of the individual cells and groups of cells. Within any single living organism can be found a wide variety of proteins formed from a pool of amino acids. Matching the precise specifications of some hidden blueprint, cells seem capable of synthesizing a particular protein over and over again. And they do it with remarkable accuracy. Consider the problem of reproducing something simple, say a dibble stick, over and over again. One needs certain information about a dibble stick, such as length and thickness. However complex the dibble stick, it would likely require only a few blueprints at most. But consider the amount of information needed to build a modern supersonic aircraft. The number of blueprints runs into the tens of thousands. A library to store this information would approach warehouse size. Yet a living organism may contain trillions of components. The components are the individual cells or groups of cells which are responsible for all the characteristics and properties of the organism. Not only must cells be able to control their development, they must be able to perform their functions. As well, they also must accurately pass on to their successors their full range of characteristics and capabilities. Where in the cell are the blueprints stored for all this construction and activity? The German biologist, Walter Fleming, studying the individual cell in the late 19th century found that the nucleus of the cell contained elongated thread-like structures which picked up a particular red dye. He called these elongated structures chromatin after the Greek word for color. During the process of cell division, however, the thread-like chromatin collects in pairs of dense, thickened bodies called chromosomes. Soma from the Greek word for body and chroma from the Greek word color. The chromosomes are the library, containing all the blueprints necessary for the development and functioning of the living organism. The blueprint containing information for a specific trait, say the color of the eye, are called genes and each chromosome contains many thousands of genes. To appreciate how small these individual blueprints actually are, imagine a gene the size of a single grain of salt. At that scale, a human would tower well above the peak of Mount Everest. In the human species, the number of genes is in the neighborhood of three billion all contained in a library so small it is visible only under powerful magnification. Genes, in turn, are generally no more than sections of a remarkable molecule called deoxyribonucleic acid, or more conveniently, DNA, which is combined with special types of proteins called histones. A molecule of DNA can be imagined as a cross between a zipper 
and a corkscrew. Take a dibble stick, two meters long. Now take a zipper, three meters long, and wind it around the rod. When the rod is removed, the remaining corkscrew zipper looks something like a DNA molecule magnified six million times. With only half the zipper, we would have a structure called a helix. But because the two halves of the zipper spiral together, we call the structure a double helix. The DNA molecule is also a double helix. It is easier to visualize the structure of a DNA molecule when it is unwound from its usual helical structure. What we see then, if we look more closely, is a structure in the shape of a ladder. The two rails of the ladder are formed by a regular alternating series of phosphoric acid and a sugar called deoxyribose. The rungs of the ladder are a series of uniformly spaced structures, each of which consists of a molecule called a purine and a molecule called a pyrimidine, linked to each other. Purine and pyrimidine both contain nitrogen. So, the paired components of the rungs are together called nitrogenous bases. Each grouping of sugar, acid, and a nitrogenous base is called a nucleotide. It is the nitrogenous base pairs in these nucleotides which form the code in which the blueprints of life are written. Different blueprints are created because of two different kinds of purine in DNA. Adenine, often abbreviated to its first letter, A, and guanine, or G. There are also two different kinds of pyrimidine in DNA. Thymine and cytosine. These four chemicals combine to make up every rung of DNA, but they only combine in four different ways. The purine, adenine, always links with the pyrimidine, thymine, in one of two ways. And guanine only combines with cytosine, again in one of two ways. AT, TA, GC, and CG. The particular order in which these combinations occur along the DNA ladder's rails constitutes the genetic code. This particular sequence contains genetic information different from the genetic information in this sequence. It is the nature of the chemical bonding along the rails that causes the structure to coil, thus providing a very convenient way to pack a lot of genetic code in a very small space. Many genetic codes may be expressed in one DNA molecule, and a single chromosome contains many thousands of DNA molecules. Here then is our vast library of blueprints. It holds the designs for all the many different types of proteins in a living organism. But a blueprint is only a first step in the construction of a protein. If this is the code, just how is it decoded to create a protein? Thank you.